Today I'm going to share with you how I made this dress form for mostly repurposed materials. And this is a custom made dress form to my size, which I ordered from Bootstrap fashion.com and I wanted a dress form for many years but they were very expensive to buy so I was looking into some alternatives and I came across the whole duct tape business but it seemed like quite a lot of effort for how it turned us out and anyway if I did a duct tape mannequin I would anyway like to upgrade because I would not be very happy with it. Hi, my name is Matilda and welcome back to Miss Matti, the channel where I share all about sewing, knitting, mending, DIYs and generally how to live an awesome and sustainable life. And if that sounds like something for you, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you will not miss any upcoming videos. So I came across this site bootstrapfashion.com where you can order pattern for a dress form in your own measurements. And I was super excited to find this because let's be honest, sizes are a little bit BS. Let's be honest, sizes are made of thing and I would actually rather have a dress form made to my size to help me make clothes that fit me better. After 2020, when it was finally time to make this dress form, I got a bit worried because I'd gained some weight, not much, and I become a little bit bigger around the hips, my waist and my bum area. I know I'm not alone in this. I just want to be super clear that I am not unhappy at all with my body. I know I'm still slim, but it's one of those concerns sometimes when we're going to put a lot of effort into a project. Will this be the best for me long term? And I was like, oh, but maybe I should make it how I used to be. And then I was like, hang on, Matilda, you always say that people should make their clothes for what the size they are now. So I just went with the measurements I have now. If I lose a bit of weight, then I can just reduce the fabric if needed. And if I gain a bit more weight, we can just pad her up. And I think it's so important to make something that fits you right here, right now, not some type of future self. And if you do change a lot in size, and if you gain or lose a lot of weight, then you Maybe you can consider making another one, but most of us, I think we just fluctuating a little bit up and down. And then, as I said earlier, you can just pad this lady up if you gain weight. And then if you have lost weight, you can just reduce whatever amount you need to reduce. Clothes are supposed to fit your own body, not a dress form. So in the end of the day, you need to try it on and see how it fits on your real body. And it's such a great help in the design process as well because you will be able to judge better how things will look. So that is why I'm super excited to finally have got around to make this dress form. Make sure to measure yourself and take note of the measurements before ordering your pattern. If possible, ask someone to measure you to ensure that you have as correct measurements as possible. To order your pattern, go to bootstrapfashion.com, then click on the DIY dress form patterns in the menu and scroll down to DIY dress form. If you are a plus size and or have a very curvy body shape, pick the DIY plus size dress form pattern to ensure that you get the best results. If you are unsure which one is the most suitable for you, they have a good size guide and FAQ on their website. Once you've selected your custom pattern, it's time to fill out your measurements. As all of my measurements I took were in centimeter, I picked that option, but if you measured yourself in inches, make sure to pick that option instead. Then fill out the height, bust, underbust, waist and lower buttocks measurements. Continue by filling out the other questions about your body shape. If you are unsure, I found it helpful to ask others which one you are. In the end, 
You can decide if you want your pattern as a CAD or ready to print file. I picked the print option and selected the 36 inches PDF. I did this because my local staples can print out this paper size for me. Then it's time to add the pattern to the cart and proceed to payment. Normally you should receive your customized pattern within an hour, but something went wrong with my pattern so it had to be manually checked by one of the pattern cutters. Once they had done so, I received my pattern files via email. Then I placed an order with my local print shop because I preferred to pay a bit extra rather than spending time taping together sheets of A4 paper. I love digital patterns, but I despise the whole taping paper pieces together part. And once I picked up the printed pattern, I did cut out all my pattern pieces. You will need to get a coat rack or dress form stand if you prefer for your dress form. I wanted to find one second hand and looked for a suitable one for over a year before I gave up and just ordered one off on Amazon around 6 months ago. Once I received it, I decided that I didn't like the brown color very much in my sewing space, so I decided to paint it with some leftover white chalk paint. I painted two layers of chalk paint and then using clear wax and a wax brush that I also had since a previous project, I applied the wax onto the coat rack. Once I had done that, I polished the wax onto the coat rack with a clean lint-free cloth. I applied the brown wax with my brush and then polished it with a cloth until I was happy with the look. I only used the brown wax on parts that I thought was going to be visible outside of the dress form. So this is how the coat rack turned out. You will also need the following items to make your dress form. A PVC pipe or plastic tube, 3 to 5 centimeters wide. This was another thing that I had to buy new from Home Depot. You will also need a sponge or sponges for the neck. My friend gave me this old piece of memory foam, which I will be using for my neck. You will also need some cardboard and around 2.3 kilos of polyfill for the smaller sizes and up to 4.6 kilos for the larger sizes and the plus sizes. I found two bags of polyfill at Value Village and then I got an old pillow from a friend as well as I butchered some low quality pillows that I had already. For the shell of my dress form I used a teal cotton twill. I decided against upcycling the fabric because I wanted to make sure that it was strong and sturdy all around. You will also need fusible interfacing, two zippers, a thread that matches your shell fabric. You will also need craft glue and a small razor knife. Forgot to show you my interlining stabilizer fabric. As this will go inside the dress form, you will not need to worry about if it matches with anything else. The most important thing is to pick a strong and sturdy fabric. I went with a black polycotton mix from my stash. I made sure that all my pattern pieces laid along the grain line and pinned them in place. Normally I use pattern weights and tail chalk to mark my pattern pieces, but I thought that with so many pattern pieces it would be easier to know which piece was which if I kept the pattern pinned on top. Take your time cutting your pattern pieces. I always say that, but even if you normally rush this step, this is not the project where you should rush this step, as accuracy is very important. When you're cutting, also make sure to transfer any pattern markings to make sure that they will be attached correctly later on. I forgot to mention that before I cut out my pattern pieces, I also ironed on the fusible interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric. It took some time to do this, but probably not as long as it would take if you attached each part individually. Even if the instructions didn't yet call for it, I decided to cut out the cardboard pieces too. The big cardboard piece will go at the bottom and the two smaller ones will be placed at the armhole. Also here, I made sure to transfer any pattern markings to make sure that I later on will place them correctly. 
I found cutting the cardboard into smaller pieces before cutting the cardboard with a small razor knife made the process much easier. Using my razor knife, I found that cutting from both sides helped to create a neatly cut edge. Then I followed by doing more prep work, by cutting out the foam pieces for the neck. Whilst doing this, I found that the best method was using both craft scissors as well as the razor knife. I worked slowly, shaving the foam in shape. As you can see, the foam wasn't thick enough all around, so I will later need to glue some pieces of foam at the bottom to create the correct thickness. I then suddenly realized that I ordered my pattern with seam allowances, and I will need to cut off the seam allowance and remove even more foam to create the correct neck shape. To hold the pattern piece in place, I pinned it into the foam and then continued to cut in shape. Using craft glue, I glued a couple of pieces of foam onto the bottom of my neck piece. Once I had done so, I taped the foam to hold the pieces in place and left it overnight to dry. Once I had removed the tape from the foam piece, I continued with shaping the glued on foam and now it's done! Whilst I was waiting for the glued on foam to dry, I did cut the coat drag to the right height. When you order your pattern, they will tell you which height you should cut the coat drag to. So I marked the measurement onto my coat drag with a sharpie and then proceeded to remove the hooks. I discovered that I needed to cut exactly where one of the metal screw compartments for one of the hooks were located. So I decided to cut the coat drag off first just above the metal part and then I continued to saw around the metal part with a goal in mind of being able to access it and remove it by wiggling with a screwdriver. I did this off camera and once it was out I did saw the wood piece that was left off. I then marked out the length of the PVC pipe as also mentioned on the pattern and by using my mitre saw I cut it to the correct length. So this is how the cut off coat rack looks like. Obviously you can't see the whole thing in frame. Here are the feet and majority of this will be covered with this PVC pipe that I have here. So it will go over like this. So it will be like this and then this will be inside the dress form itself. This will be I mean inside the body of the dress form. So this I will sew a little case for that will go inside and yeah, let's get into it and construct the dress form. Oh yeah, also didn't show you this cheese looking sponge for the neck. So you can see here that I glued here together uh, it's a little bit stiffer here, but I think it's gonna be fine to pin through it anyway. But with this, I think it's gonna be hold together properly inside the neck and give a nice firm structure. So I thought it was really neat to use that old memory foam that my friend had and instead of like buying new foam or sponges. Now it's time to start sewing. I first 
pinned all my pattern pieces together as instructed in the pattern. And then, using a 2mm stitch length, I started to sew all the pattern pieces together. Once the pattern pieces were sewn together, I cut into the seam allowances every 4th cm so that the curves will be able to have a smooth and neat finish. Then I pressed all the seams open and made sure that all my pattern pieces were pressed. Even if they will need pressing later on as well, I find pressing as I go really helps to create a professional looking finish. A tip is to use tailor's hand when pressing the curves on the dress form. It is especially helpful when pressing the bust pieces. I then pin the bust pieces to my front pieces and it's time to sew them together. Sew and pivot along the curve slowly. Take your time, make sure to avoid creating any folds or creases in the seam. The next step is an optional step, and that is to mark the bust curve by top stitching in a contrasting thread color. I picked a silver thread that I got from a friend several years ago when she was decluttering, and on the bobbin, I decided to go with a gray cotton thread to create a strong stitch. Once the bust curve was top stitched using a zigzag stitch, I pinned the top front pieces to the bust and stitched them together. After pressing the bust seams open, this is how the front pieces now look like. Now I will base stitch at the underbust, the waist and the lower buttocks lines. This is partly to help me attach all the pattern pieces as accurately as possible. But it will also serve as a guide for when I need to top stitch these lines with silver thread later on. Here you can see the basting stitches which I made off camera. I forgot to mention earlier that I will also need to stitch the bust line. So I baste stitch this line at the back piece only because at the front I will just follow the existing seam. Before sewing the sides together, I will also need to stay stitch the armholes. And once I had done that, I stitched the sides together Press the seams open and then it was time to top stitch the bust line, under bust, waistline and lower hip measurement on each side. Once both pieces had been top stitched, it was now time to sew the center front seam together. Then I pressed the front seam open, cut off any excess seam allowance at the shoulder before pinning and sewing the shoulders together. I stay stitched the neck, 
on both the neckline of the body of the dress form itself and on the neck pattern piece as well. Then I cut into the seam allowances at the neckline and pinned the neck piece to the neckline. I did this to make it easier to stitch the neck to the curved seam. Once the neck piece was attached, I followed by sewing the center back seam together. Now it's time for some of the trickiest parts, at least in my opinion, of making this dress form. I pinned the top neck piece to the neck and then placed it under the machine to stitch together. I slowly stitched around, making sure that no folds, puckering or creases were created. Once the top neck piece was attached, I cut off any excess seam allowance to prevent a bulky finish on the neck. Now it's time to attach the armhole pieces. This was an even trickier part to attach than the neck pieces, if you ask me. I worked counterclockwise slowly around one side of the armhole. Then I turned the piece and worked on the other side of the armhole clockwise. Then it was time to attach the cardboard pieces that we did cut out earlier to each armhole. First, I baste stitched my interlining piece to the armhole. This will help hold the cardboard piece in place. I baste stitched until I had enough space left to pull the cardboard piece inside before continuing. I cannot remember if base stitching was part of the instructions, but I remember trying to attach the interlining with the cardboard piece inside using my sewing machine. And it just didn't work out at all. So I decided to hand stitch the interlining and the cardboard piece in place using black thread and a back stitch. Once I had backstitched all around the armhole, I removed the basting stitches before continuing on the other side. Now it's time to make the stabilizer. I discovered that my PVC pipe actually wasn't 5cm in diameter as I thought, but actually 6cm. So I had to alter the patterns a bit and cut a 1cm wider piece of the pipe sleeve, as well as removing half a centimeter on both the front and the back stabilizers. As the stabilizers will not be visible, I picked a pastel purple thread that I have and doubt I ever will use for sewing together the stabilizers. Before attaching the pipe sleeve to the stabilizers, I did sew it together and tried it on the PVC pipe to ensure it did fit. Once I had ensured that the PVC pipe indeed fit, I cut the ends evenly around. These will later on be glued onto the bottom cardboard piece to hold the pipe sleeve in place. Then I took out the pipe and pinned the front and back stabilizers to the sleeve and stitched them in place. Then the instructions told me to stay stitch vertical random lines back and forth across the fabric to reinforce it. Once I've done this on the front piece, I did the same on the back piece. Once that was done, it was time to attach the stabilizer to the dress form. I pinned the stabilizer to the back center seam and the front center seam and then stitched in place.
Then it was time to create the bottom pieces. I stay stitched the center edges before stitching these pieces together. And then I cut into the curve where the coat rack later will go through. I also find it helpful here to reduce the seam allowances to prevent a bulky finish. I then turned the piece and pressed and repeated the same process on the other side. Then it was time to attach the zippers. I found basting the zippers to the bottom pieces better than pinning them and as such a base stitched both zippers in place before sewing. With a zipper foot I sewed both zippers in place using a matching thread. I then cut off the excess zipper length and off camera I stitched back and forth at the end of each zipper. Before attaching the bottom pieces to the body of the dress form, I stay stitched around the bottom edge. And also I did put my she's looking foam piece inside the neck. I then pinned the bottom pieces with the zippers open to the bottom edge. I touched one side together clockwise and then the other side counterclockwise. However, I'm not sure if this is the easiest or best method. It's time to start stuffing, or almost. First, I needed to put the PVC pipe inside the pipe sleeve and then it was time to start to stuff the dress form. If you make your own dress form, prepare a whole evening for this and have podcasts, an audiobook or some TV shows ready to watch. I first watched a podcast with Marie Forleo and Seth Godin on creativity, followed by several episodes of Kim's Convenience. I made sure to stuff the dress form firmly from neck to bottom. To avoid a lumpy looking finish, I stuffed small portions at a time. The instructions told me to stuff extra firmly at the breasts, which I made sure to do. I found a chopstick, a helpful tool to use to push stuffing firmly into specific areas. During the process, I made sure to measure the bust, waist and lower buttocks measurements to make sure that it wasn't stuffed too much or too little. When stuffing was almost done, it was time to put the bottom cardboard piece in place. Using craft glue and a chopstick to apply it with, I glued the fabric strips at the bottom of the pipe sleeve to the cardboard. Once the glue was dried, it was time to stuff some more. But I had already used up 
all my polyfill. I would recommend all of you to get some extra to make sure that this doesn't happen to you as well. I hunted around my apartment for anything I could use as stuffing and I found some bags of wool rowing that I had intended to spin into yarn. But as it hasn't happened for the over two years, I decided to use it as stuffing instead. So now it's time to put on the finished dress from onto the cutoff. I have tempered buffalo is called the coat track. <laughs> okay, let's try it out. So it's finally done. This should be my measurements, but somehow I don't know why it feels like it's taller than me. I don't know if that's meant to be. I follow the instructions of cutting off the coat rack how it is, but I think as working on this dress form, I think this is a perfect height because I can looking at it like this it just feels better than to look down and working on the dress form like that. I don't, does it make sense? It feels like actually it needs to be higher up, but I don't know if it's meant to be exactly my height or if something went completely wrong in the process. Otherwise, it's sort of my size, like you can't maybe tell in this top. The main difference is, I guess, that my hip bone goes out much quicker here and I'm not like... So my shape is slightly different on around here, but it has the word width and it's not meant to be an exact copy of me anyway. Yeah, so overall I'm really pleased with it. I just find that though that I worked on it so much I started to become extremely self-critical at this point. I can see all the errors right now. At the same time, I am still very pleased with how it turned out and I am so excited that I finally made this piece because it's going to make so many other projects that I planned for 2021 so much easier to do. I missed having a dress form. I used to have one many years ago, but I sold it. Another thing I'm super pleased with is that I had the same thing I'm dealing with right now with a dress form when it comes to um, the coat rack when I've been painting it. I felt really worried that I made it really ugly. Uh, but now when it's put together, I'm just really pleased with how it turned out. I really hope you liked following the process of making my own dress form. And if you did, hit that like button. And also, if you want to support my work, you can now buy me a coffee at coffee.com. You can support me from as little as $3 Canadian, but also if you cannot afford it, I really just appreciate that you're watching my content. And if you want to support me a bit extra, you can do so by sharing this video with someone in your life that you think will appreciate and want to learn how to make their own dress form. And if you like this video, I really think you will like these videos over here. And until next time, bye!